Before we get straight into the podcast, I just want to give a huge shout out to our sponsors, D Kirby GA Star. Declan Kirby GA Star Championship Journey, it's a series of GA team children's books written by primary school teacher and GA coach Michael Egan. You can check it out in the link in the description down below, of course, as well. Follow the trials and tribulations of Declan Kirby and his team at Smith Green Gaelic Football Club, recently formed a promising GA team. The book is now available in Easton's and all good bookshops, so check it out in the description down below and let's get straight into into it but i suppose first of all how's yourself anyway you enjoying the weather i mean it's um we've had some weather over the weekend anyways some weather Aaron, and thanks for having me on again but uh yeah the weather is unbelievable it's great to have jay it was brilliant games over the weekend but one place we can start i like to offer my deepest condolences to the duffy family from Monaghan after the loss of brendan oak on friday night um hard to lose on saturday morning i watched the game on friday night with them playing Donegal in the under-20, they beat him in an epic encounter. And then for that to happen to a young lad, 19 years of age, younger than both ourselves, it's 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 just tragic what, what happened over the weekend. And there was questions whether the game should have gone ahead with our man, Monaghan, considering our man also had COVID cases. I don't know. I know it was a brilliant game in the end, but look, it, it probably really shouldn't have gone ahead. Uh, with all the commotion going on beforehand, like you look, for example, Aaron Mulligan, who probably should have been under 20, playing t- centre forward in that game, what must have gone through his head? Like it was, it was a, it was a tragic situation. And again, I'd lo- like to offer my deepest condolences to the Duffy family and the reaction for the GA community countrywide has been absolutely outstanding. Bit of silences, bit of applause, held up and down the country. The Cork under 20 team make it aim and having a bit of silence and training, like the whole GA community got together. And I, again, I'd like to offer my deepest condolences to the Duffy family and um, rest in peace, Brent Donog. Yeah, absolutely. Same for myself. I'd, I'd like to offer my deepest condolences as well to to his family, to his friends and, and all connected. I, I should have mentioned that on the match reaction in the, in the Monaghan Armagh game, but I think because of how crazy a game was, it, it was, it kind of just slipped over my head in that brief moment. But yeah, absolutely. I'd like to, to offer my condolences as well. Like it was, it was a hard one to comprehend. To be honest, it's still it's a hard one to speak about. Like I know even in the I was at the Dublin Kilkenny game at the weekend, and there was a, a minute silence before the game, and it was it was spine tingling in many ways. It was, um, but yeah, like what you said, like the way the GEA community has reacted to it, I think has has been brilliant. And I do think the game probably shouldn't have gone ahead, but I suppose it, it did in the end. And you know, obviously that was the the situation. I suppose we will move on to the to the football. Um, you obviously had four games taking place. We'll we'll touch on the minor game actually as well, just briefly. But um, I suppose Donegal and Tyrone, first of all, a lot of drama. But Tyrone, they get the better of their rivals. I mean, Donegal have had Tyrone's number in the past couple of years, but it was it was Tyrone who who, who turned up in this game, especially in the second half against uh, a Michael Murphyless Donegal. Yeah, and it was uh, comprehensive at the end, which was. Unexpected, um, given the rivalry between the two sides, but that sending off, it made all the difference. And even look at the yellow and the black, should it have been yellow, should it have been black, it's a sending off. It's as simple as that. And look, it was unfortunate for Michael Murphy, who didn't have his best championship with injuries and then getting sent off. He wasn't at his best. And look, Tyrone were the much better team throughout the day, but that sending off definitely swung the pendulum. And Tyrone took full advantage of us. Like Darren McCurry is performing well. Like Paul Donahue didn't even get on the pitch. Carl McShane got on in the last few minutes. So when you look at the talent in that Tyrone team, it's kind of scary for a prospect for Monaghan in the final or even Kerry in the semi-final. So it's it's going to be a, it's going to be a decent championship, I think, for Tyrone. They got over that hurdle that they've they failed on so many times against Donegal and onwards and upwards for Tyrone and it looks like Fergal Logan and Brian Dewar have got something out of these players which they haven't in the league campaign gone by so look it's a decent win for Tyrone but that sending off made a huge difference in the game yeah it definitely did like and 
I suppose for Tyrone, like uh, I feel like that Ulster final is coming at the, the right time. And even this Donegal game came at the, the right time because the bench like made a, a massive difference. Like especially Conor McKenna who came on looked more like the, the Conor McKenna of last year. Like not just the the point that he scored, but it was also his tracking back as well and, and winning a few, getting a few defensive blocks in. Colin McShane came off the bench, scored a, a point. He's getting closer to full fitness. So I suppose for Tyrone, like you've obviously got Darren McCurry in wonderful form and all Sludden looked very good as well. So like they're going into the, the Monaghan game with a lot of confidence. And I mean, who knows where Tyrone can can go from here? I mean, I certainly wouldn't have Tyrone as, as all Ireland contenders at this point, but certainly anyway, going into that Ulster final, they'll they'll go in as favourites, I presume. They'll have to go in as favourites, definitely, yeah. And yes, Monaghan have improved immensely over the last year or so, but you still have to fancy Tyrone to overcome them in the end. And even looking down the line, like we'll get on to Dublin later on, but I think Dublin, looking at their performance against Meade, I think they're vulnerable enough. And look at Kerry's defence, as I said, um, and past videos on your channel, they're still vulnerable. So Tyrone will be going into that final game with confidence and they'll be seeing an all Ireland there for them. Like it's going to be a huge opportunity for them looking at their Pat Monaghan, Kerry, possibly Dublin in the final, and Dublin aren't at their best now this year without Cluxton. So, look, you can't take anything for granted. I think Monaghan are a decent side, so Tyrone will eye towards that first of all and try and get the job done there. I think presumably they will, but then again, you never know. But it looks signs of good for Tyrone. Look, it's uh, the path they have to all earn the glory in many ways. So, Look, it'll be a tough game against Monaghan. And as you said, it is coming at the right time. The players are beginning to click now. The likes of Conor McKenna, like Paul Donaghy, didn't even come on yesterday. Cahill McShane. You look at Noel Stoughton, who was in no the team over the last few years, and now he's stamped his authority in the team. And he looks in fine form. Peter Hart um, is a decent player, a very versatile player. So, look, signs look good for Tyrone, but don't sleep on Monaghan just yet. Yeah, like, and I suppose it was a championship to forget, I suppose, for, for Michael Murphy, obviously missing the, the penalty, getting sent off as well. Like, personally, I don't I don't think there was any question with the, with the sending off at all. I think whether it was a black or it was a yellow, like, in my opinion, it looked more like frustration from, from missing the penalty. But, yeah, like, for, for Donegal, like, they just, they probably just ran out of ideas, ran out of answers. Paddy McBrearty didn't have the same influence that he had in the, in the Derry game, well, at least in the closing minutes anyway. It was kind of similar to the to the entirety of the Derry game where, you know, he was kind of marked out of the game. Michael Langan obviously dropped a, a few chances wide late on. So I suppose for Donegal, like a lot of a lot of questions would obviously be asked of, of Declan Bonner and a, and a few of the other backroom staff because, I mean, it's another year, unfortunately, once again, where they've, you know, not got to an All-Ireland semi-final. And with the squad that they have, with the players that they have, you really would feel like they would have been to an All-Ireland semi-final at least over the past three or four years. Yeah, it's, it's an incredible statistic that Donegal haven't reached an all earth semi points since 2014 since they ambushed Dublin in many ways. Like So that's that's a long time, considering Cork haven't reached all earth semi points since 2012 and people say Donegal have progressed as much as Cork over the last few years. Like, look at that. There's two years between all earth semi final appearances. Like, and when you look at that, have Donegal really progressed under Declan Bonner? Like that's that's the huge question here. Um, they've won two Ulster titles, and they'll say, "Look, Ulster's the toughest uh, province in the country," but no All Ireland semi final to show, and that that's the be all and end all. And it's it's harsh on Donegal in many ways. Uh, what happened to them this year? Murphy wasn't uh, fully fit. The the road they had to the final this year was incredibly tough. You look at Derry, was an incredibly tough game. Derry could have beat them the last day. Tyrone, uh, yesterday, beat them quite comprehensively in the end. So it's a disappointing championship for Donegal. And as Colin O'Rourke said in the Sunday game last night, arguably Donegal have regressed rather than progressed over the last few years. And That'll be a worry for Declan Bonner, considering he won two Ulster titles in his first two seasons, then lost to Cavan, and then it's his worst Ulster championship performance to date. So it's tough times for Donegal. I don't know, will they replace Declan Bonner? I think, considering he's got two Ulster titles, I wouldn't be surprised if he stayed on 
But then again, that'll probably be his last season, next season, if not this season. So, look, it's disappointing they haven't reached all their, all their semi-final in that time, considering they won two of the titles. But, look, it's a question, where do they go from here? Yeah, like, um, it's, it's a tough one with Declan Bonner because obviously he is a fan favourite, obviously having been a part of the Donegal side that won the All-Ireland back in, in 1992 and obviously won two Ulster titles in his first two years. And I remember back in 2018, Donegal were relegated from the league. No one really expected them to win the Ulster title. They'd done it and, you know, it was a big surprise. They didn't have to beat any of the big teams. They didn't have to beat Tyrone or Monaghan um, en route. They actually beat Fermanagh in the final that year but obviously came back and won it again in, uh, in in 2019. So it's, yeah, it's an interesting one with Donegal and, uh, and Declan Bonner. Like they've, their Super 8's record hasn't been the best, obviously when they were in there as well. So beaten by Cavan last year, like I feel like with Donegal fans, maybe they're the, the ones to the side. I suppose the question really is like, who else, who else is out there? I know some people were saying maybe they'll, they'll get Jim McGuinness back. I, I don't know if that's possible really, but I mean, it's, it's a hard one. It's a hard one to know where Donegal go from here. It is, yeah, and um, that's that's an interesting one. Jim McGuinness coming back into the dugout. Um, look, I, I actually don't know, other than Jim McGuinness, who would take on that Donegal job. Um, and considering the last semi-final appearance Donegal made, Jim McGuinness was the coach. That just shows how long ago that was. So you, you have to question who... Who's going to come into that Donegal setup? It's going to be a tough one if Declan Bonner leaves, of course. But I honestly don't think he'll leave. I think Davy with Wexford is obvious. I think this with Donegal, I don't think it's that obvious. I think Declan will probably stay on for a fifth year and call it quits if he progresses yet again in the Ulster Championship next season. So, look, it's it's a tough question for Donegal. Where does it go from here? But... Um, I suppose the answer for many Johnny Gall fans is Jim McGuinness, but then again, with his Scott, with his uh, appearances at Sky, you look at the money he's getting. I don't know would he be interested in coming back, but the thing is, Kieran Donaghy left um, left Sky for some games and went to Armagh and their coaching setup. So then again, you never know. And look, it's it's a tough question for Johnny Gall where to go from here. But I think they'll keep Declan Bonner for another year, but it would be a given. Yeah, it will be interesting, all right, with, with Jim McGuinness. And I'm sure he's been offered multiple managerial jobs from multiple counties and, and obviously declined, I'd imagine. Anyways, I suppose another manager that people are kind of questioning, I suppose, and I suppose I don't, I'm not too sure if it's entirely fair, but I can understand why some people would be, is obviously Kieran McGinney. Obviously, Armagh were beaten by Monaghan, 417 to 221. Like we were saying at the, the start of the show, obviously a very emotional day for from Monaghan GEA with the passing of, uh, of Brendan O'Duffy. Um, and I suppose, like, for Monaghan, you know, it's uh, it was an emotional day, but it was a huge win, and it was a win that obviously meant a lot for, for Monaghan getting that victory when, obviously, Monaghan led for the majority of the game. Armagh obviously came back. Monaghan then came back at the death as well with Conor McManus. So a big win for, for Monaghan on a, an emotional day for, for Monaghan GEA. Absolutely emotional, day. and as we start, um, said at the start, with uh, Brendan O. Condolences to his family, and uh, they lost their sponsor as well early on in the week. So it was a tough week for Monaghan G. And looking at the game itself, they burst out of the traps, scoring four goals in the first half. No one expected it. And Armagh looked, yes, Monaghan were unbelievable at times, cutting through that Armagh defence, but you have to question how they. How did our market cut open so easily, time and time again? Like that that's the thing with um Kira Begidi. Like our that's the worry that most people have with Armad. They have the attacking talent, they use their advantage as shown with the two goals on Saturday, but defensively, like out of all the Ulster sides, I think arguably Armad one of the weakest defensively. Like it's like what what happens over them four goals, especially the four goal for Darren Hughes? It looked just so easy for Monaghan just to cut through them and put place it into the back of the net. Like it was easy at times, way too easy. And you you questioned in the first half whether Armagh would actually come back from this, considering they were going for points rather than going for the juggler. But then in the fourth quarter, um, first kick of the ball straight into Reed O'Neill's hands and then Conor Torbett fits the ball home and it's a game on. 
and no one expected it whatsoever. Step a mind stone and our man just recover miraculously. And even the quick thinking for the second goal was absolutely brilliant. But hats off to Monaghan at the end. You think they're going to lie down here and our man are going to gain the victory. But in fairness to Monaghan, to Conor McManus, to all the Monaghan backroom staff, to the team itself, they dug out the victory and they didn't have to do anything fancy on a on a scorching day. They dug out a, a victory in the end when our man looked like they had it wrapped up. And that's that's the good sign of a team that Monaghan can come back from this. And considering the emotional week they had, it was an absolutely brilliant victory for Monaghan GA overall. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and I suppose touching on Armagh, first of all, like, especially in the first half and even in the stages in the early part of the second half, seemed to rem- like it seemed like the same old Armagh, a bit like Donegal the year previous, where once again in a in an all or in a in an Ulster semi final, they haven't turned up and defensively they've been all over the place. And I suppose in the second half, they did show that bite and they did show that determination, but. I suppose, again, like for a Kieran McGinney side and for an Armagh team that in the past have been lauded for how good they've been defensively and how good they've been physically. I mean, again, they just they just seem a bit lightweight at times in, in Ulster, which is probably why their record has been quite poor in Ulster down the years. Like, it seems like when they come up against a Monaghan, a Tyrone or a Donegal, like those sides physically are just way too far ahead of, of Armagh at the moment. And that is the unfortunate fact for our man, despite Kieran Donaghy coming in, you can't really change that. Like, as I said, they are arguably one of the weakest defences in the Ulster Championship. Like, you look at Tyrone's defence, Monaghan's defence, you look at them defences and you think, on a normal day, they wouldn't make those sort of silly errors. Like, it wasn't late in the game when uh, teams were tiring and all that. It was early in the game when they should have been fresh and look what happened. But then again, they were struck with COVID cases. Blaine Hughes was out of the team. So, and you could see Shea McGill, their goalkeeper was a bit nervous with the kickout, especially for one of their goals, kicked it straight to a Monaghan player. And it ends up at the back of the net. So look, it's, it's a learning curve for Armad. They were in division one. They got to an Ulster semi-final. It's probably their best, um, Attempt at an Ulster title over the last few years under Kier Begidi. So they'll take that as a positive, I suppose. But they'd want to win an Ulster title with the players they have at their disposal. They'd want to win an Ulster title. Considering they haven't got to an Ulster final since 2008. Like, no matter how much they've improved, that is, that's a terrible statistic for our man. I think they're the, the, the sides, like, like Antrim have reached the final more recently than them. Fermanagh have reached the final. Down have reached the final. Derry have reached the final in 2011. So in that in that regard, it's it's a poor statistic for our man. They want to change that, but to change that, they have to improve their defence. And looking at their defence, the errors they made, the silly sloppy errors on Saturday, I I don't see how that defence improves next season. Yeah, like and. I suppose like for like a common team, I think we've seen from both sides and, and Monaghan as well, is that I don't think either side really know how to, to hang on to a lead. We've seen with well, Monaghan against Cavan last year, they couldn't seem to to hold out the lead. They couldn't seem to see, see the game through. And like Monaghan are just, they're a much better team when they're chasing the game. Um, and Armagh are probably the same as well. Like Armagh probably turned it around too quickly because then like there were two points up going into injury time and you could tell that they were kind of, they didn't really know what to be doing. Like, do they go forward? Do they defend? Do they try to keep possession? In the end, they either, they ended up doing neither. They gave the ball back to Monaghan and Monaghan were the ones then who were able to turn it around. So it is kind of mad. Like neither side can really hold on to a lead and, and Monaghan, I suppose, like they're, they're just so much better chasing the game because their leaders tend to, you know, stand up the likes of Jack McCarron's and, Darren Hughes and of course Connor McManus once again like turning up on a on a big occasion from Monaghan similarly to what he'd done against Galway. And it's interesting you mentioned Armagh they, they didn't know what to do with the attack or defend. There was actually a moment going into additional time where I think it was one of their forwards, soap players running down the wing and just waiting for support rather than going for the point himself or kicking it dead. Like that that must have been that could have been like a score to them if they just kicked it wide, slowed the game down, 
but they didn't do it. They hand passed it into the centre and Monaghan turned the ball over. They go down the other end and a freeze conceded. Like, that's game management. And our man need to learn that if they want to progress on next year. But the key aspect for Monaghan, against Cavan, they, they were shot by the turnaround and they couldn't, they, they couldn't recover. The main thing for Monaghan here, they showed that resolve, that drive to come back into the game. And that is a pleasing aspect for Monaghan going into the Tyrone game. They'll be going in as underdogs and you've seen Monaghan over the last few years win their underdogs, especially against Tyrone in 2018, against uh, other sides down through the years, Galway, the Super 8 that year. If they're the underdogs, it's a dangerous, dangerous game there and Monaghan will be up for it. So, Look, our man need to improve for next year, especially defensively, especially silly errors and close at the game most. But onwards and upwards for Monaghan, they might even shock to roll. And considering how they've performed as the underdogs over the last few years, I wouldn't be surprised if they go on and beat their rivals to roll at the final. Mm, yeah, and I think Monaghan actually beat Tyrone in their last championship meeting, I think back in, in 2018, from, from what I remember. or Well, actually, they played each other in a Super 8 game, I think, didn't they? And, and Tyrone got the better of them. So it'll certainly, yeah, it'll be certainly interesting to, to keep an eye on on that game in particular. I suppose we were, we were speaking about game management and, and seeing a game out. And I suppose one team that I suppose has been famous of doing that down the years has obviously been Dublin. I mean, definitely a very uncharacteristic and poor second half performance probably one of the worst second half performances i can remember in a long time from dublin in all honesty like they scored more points in in injury time than they did in the the rest of the second half combined and they just slowed the game down kept the ball but i mean speaking about the game in the entirety it was obviously 216 to 113 in the leinster final i mean a lot closer than people think and once again like dublin it's mad like there's been all these one-sided margins and margins and one-sided games Dublin haven't really been involved in any of them. Like, they beat Wexford by nine. They beat Mead by six. Like, I mean, I can't remember the last time that Dublin were going into a Leinster final having not beaten the previous sides by double digits. So, I mean, it's um, it's been a very strange year for Dublin. I mean, they did win the game, but it's still been a, a strange year so far for Dublin. It's been a very strange year. Like, as far as I can remember, I think... The last time Dublin went into a Leinster final off the back of a very, very tough encounter was the game against Kildare where uh, the referee was probably on your side at the end with um, Andrew McLaughlin and Bernard Brogue. I remember that game very well. Yeah, but, yeah, but geez, it's it's a long time coming. And considering it all Leinster Championship games since 2014, only one game up until this year was a single-digit margin, the game against Kildare in 2017. And now we have two in the space of uh, in the space of two games against Wexford and Meath. Who, no disrespect to those sides, you'd expect Dublin to be putting the, them away with ease, considering the talent they have. But I think it shows the huge loss on that Dublin team is Cluxton. Like he dictates the play, he he barks out the orders, and I don't think Evan Comerford. Yes, he might be good down the line, but I think. He is at that same influence as Cluxton was or is. And that'll be that'll be the you know the obvious caveat for Dublin. And look, fair play to me. Like I expected them to get a hiding yesterday. And geez, they put up a huge showing and fair play to Andy McAtee's players, considering what happened to them last year, an absolute slaughtering at the hands of Dublin. And then to put up a brilliant performance, you have to give credit to me and They'll go into the Division 2 next year and the Leinster Championship with confidence. And considering there's a qualifier system next year, they'll be confident on going a long way in the Championship now next year. And look, Dublin going to the final against Kildare. I think they still should be Kildare. But I think, look, it'll be a tough game yet again for Dublin. And as I say, Cluxton is a huge loss for you. And look, um, I suppose... Uh, when's the last time you were sweating over a Leinster Championship game, Aaron, a long time ago? It's a... Yeah, it's definitely it was definitely a weird one, all right, going into extra time when there was only three points in it and you knew that maybe if, if Mead got the ball and went down the other end and, and maybe got a goal, you were talking about extra time. So it was, um, yeah, it was, it was a very strange one. And like what you were saying with Evan Comerford, I thought he'd done a, a good job in the first half with his kickouts. I thought he'd done really well. He made one brilliant save as well. At one stage, so I thought he done brilliant in the first half, but in the second half, he seemed to go very central. 
with his kickouts and he seemed to take them very quickly as well. He, he like one thing that I think a lot of people don't give Cluxton credit for as well is that like he takes a lot of time with his kickouts, especially when they're under pressure. He'll take that extra five to ten seconds just to let everyone get settled, to take a breather, to take the sting out of the game. And I thought Evan Comerford was rushing his kickouts a little bit. Um, which gave me the, the impetus because Dublin weren't always set up from their own kick out. So it'll definitely be something for, for Desi Farrell to, to work on. Like, would you say that maybe the sides in Leinster are, are getting better or do you think that Dublin are just getting worse or, or maybe is it a, a case of both? It probably is a case of both in all honesty. Like Mead, I think, were much better last year. It's a weird one. They were much better last year going into the Leinster final and they got a slaughtering. I think they struggled in parts this year at Division 2 in many ways. Like against Westmead, they struggled. Against Kildare, they got a three-point hammering. Like I think Kildare were a much better team throughout the game and Mead made a late rally. But looking, going into the game, people didn't give Mead a hope. Like they gave Mead some sort of hope last year and they got a slaughtering. They gave him no hope this year and... Mead only lost by six points. Like you have to give credit to Mead, but I think it is a bit of both. I think Cluxton is a huge loss to Dublin, and um, maybe their older players are getting on a bit, and the younger players don't know how to really close out a game, how to manage a game in many ways. The likes of um, Tom Lahiff, Pat O'Coffey, Byrne, Paddy Spall, all them, they're, like, they're new to the system, and it will take time. But look. Is it the end of the Dublin dominance? We'll have to see against... Um, well, not so much against Kildare. I think they'd still win that game. But against Mayor or Galway in the semi-finals, I think that'll be the acid test for Dublin to see how they've progressed. And we'll find out the, the definitive answer then. But for now, I think... Look, I think it's a bit of both. I think the Leinster sides have improved vastly. But Dublin, there's questions to be asked, definitely, especially after the performance yesterday. Yeah, like, I'd, I'd have to be honest, like... um. Like watching the first half performance, I thought we were we were brilliant. We were kind of back to our best. We looked like the the Dublin of last year, scoring two eleven in the first half. Like if Dublin can play like that again, you know, in the Kildare game and keep that level of consistency, I think you know, I think we're you know because it's a tale of two halves. I think if if, if Dublin had carried on in that manner, people would have said, "Oh, Dublin are back. Dublin are going to go on to 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 win the All Ireland." Like the seven in a row is back on, and I think what we've seen in the second half as well is like Dublin's just they just have a lack of players coming off the bench as well. Like none of their players who came off the bench scored. Colin Baskell has been brilliant with Bally Bowden, but it just hasn't worked for him with the, with the Dublin senior footballers for whatever reason, like Kieran Archer isn't in the squad, which I think is a bit surprising. I would have at least maybe had him in the squad, at least so he can train with the team, whether he's in a development squad or what the plan is, I'm not sure. And obviously I know like with the under twenties, you need to give them game time because they haven't had games over the past year, but even putting one or two of them on the bench, wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world. So, yeah, it is an interesting one with Dublin. Like, and I even had a dream there a few days ago that Mayo beat Dublin by like seven or eight points in a in an, in an All Ireland semi final. Now, <laughs> Kieran McDonald was playing, so I, I don't think I don't think he'll be playing in this game. But like, to be honest, that I am a little worried. Like, I don't know. I have a sneaky feeling now with Mayo. Like, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm looking too much into it. Uh, look, uh, Kieran McDonald, like he's in the back row team and all that. And <laughs> yeah. He got the comes ball the kicked bench. from him, like, comes off the bench and scores. And uh, you know, what's he doing there? And look, look, he has said uh, the way he kicks the ball, still, he still has a lovely um score in him. So you, you never know, you never know. He might come onto the pitch and uh, haunt you. And um, look, the thing is, I think. The Leinster final will be tight in the end. We'll get on to Kildare later on, but I think, look, look at uh, Kildare, even uh, coming from a Cork fan here, they will in the last 10 minutes. That would be the main thing for Dublin. I think they'll probably put them away in the last 10 minutes. Uh, Kildare wilted against Mead. They wilted against Cork. They went, wilted against Clare. And they wilted a small bit against West Mead yesterday as well. So that'll be a huge, a huge bonus for Dublin going into the game if they're struggling. But... At the start of the game, Dublin would have to perform like they did in the first half. I think if they performed like they did in the first half yesterday against Kildare, they'd put them away in the last 10 minutes. That's probably given at this stage. I think Dublin should put away Kildare, but the acid test, as I said, will be Mayo or Galway. 
but you never know. Michael Meehan might come into the Galway team, or maybe Kieran McDonald will come into the Mayo team. We'll have to see. But look, it, it'll be tough either way in that all Ireland semi final, and that'll show how far Dublin have regressed since last year. Yeah, like I suppose it will be. Yeah, it will be an interesting one. All right, like and. I mean, yeah, like Mead can definitely take a lot of confidence anyway from from the, the performance in the second half, and I suppose they won't. Their season doesn't end on a on a sour note like it did last year, and I suppose with the refereeing decisions as well, like they definitely should have got a penalty, and there was a few, you know, Brian Fenton was kind of involved at both ends in in terms of penalties. So on another day, they could have, you know, you're talking about a six point swing. It definitely could have maybe worked in their favor. Kildare they obviously beat West Mead two fourteen to eighteen points. I suppose Kildare, they, they just about got over the line in the end. I think it's a bit of a missed opportunity for Westmead. They missed a lot of wides in the in the first half, but I suppose for Kildare, it's it's a big moment for them getting to a, a Leinster final because it's been it's been a good couple of years since they've been in a in a Leinster final. Yeah, it's been a long time for Kildare and uh, for Westmead. I think it's I know it was a missed opportunity, but considering the opposition they played this year, they have to be very proud of themselves for the effort they put in this year against Mead. Mayo, Cork, they scored 25 points against Leash. They were very impressive. I was watching that game. They were very impressive in that game. Put Leash away at ease. And then against Kildare, they came close to them as I thought they would yesterday. Maybe it was a missed opportunity, but look at the year they had. Despite the relegation they had, I think Jack Cooney has to be proud of his players and then move on to next year. As for Kildare... Look, it's job done for them. They've got into the Leinster final despite having less scores than Westmead yesterday. But look, a win's a win and Jack O'Connor wouldn't uh, mind. And that's the thing, like Jack O'Connor could be up against Dublin considering Jack O'Connor mastermind is uh, hammering uh, 127 to 17 or 16 in 2009, that game. Look, um, maybe that's a scary prospect for Dublin fans like yourself. But look, I I think look, it's it's good for Kildare to get into Leinster final. I think considering what Dublin showed in the second half yesterday, Kildare will go into the Leinster final with confidence. But unlike Mead, I think Kildare has to be honest from the first whistle. I think if they're not honest from the first whistle, I think Dublin will win the game, whether it's six points or one point or ten points. I think Kildare have to be honest for the first whistle because over the past few games, they wilt in the last ten minutes and that'll be a worry for them. Look, they tend to start games well. They need to start well against Dublin, but as I said, it's great for them to be in the Leinster final, but well done to Westmead for such a promising year. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it definitely was a, a very impressive performance in the second half. And I think even after like Jimmy Hyland got a goal at the start of the second half and then Daniel Flynn got one straight after. And to be fair to Westmead, they they battled really hard. And I think Kildare, like they've struggled seeing games out. They've done a better job in this game, to be fair to them. They definitely slowed the game down quite a lot there going into, into injury time from what I could see. So they definitely deserve a, a lot of praise for that. Like in yeah, going up against Dublin next. I mean, it will be an interesting one, like what you said with Jack O'Connor. Like I even think back to 2009 as well when Kildare played Dublin in the Leinster final, and that was a a cracking game of football. But like personally, I feel like Dublin are going to turn it on in this game. We might give Kildare a bit like what we did against me last year because there are a lot of people questioning Dublin at the moment, and I don't know. I feel like if we don't see a response from from Dublin against Kildare then I would definitely be be worried that maybe Mayo or, or Kerry or whoever it would be would turn Dublin over because I think, you know, it's been two pretty drab performances in the in the Lancer Championship so far. And I think if it's another poor performance against Kildare, it's going to be very hard, and in my opinion anyway, to, to see how Dublin can continue the dominance for at least this year anyway. Yeah, the, the key to this is um, like people hyped up Mead last year and it ended up as a hammering, I think, People will just don't play Kildare, just say, oh, Dublin are going to win this handy enough. And then Kildare will turn up and uh, there'll be a point or two in us, or maybe Kildare could beat you. Yeah, you never know. You never know. But look at us um, um, realistically, I think Kildare's objective is to get under 10 points. If they could get under even five points, get under that, that'll be a success for them. They've, they're gone up to Division One. That'll be a success for Jack O'Connor and his players this season. 
for Dublin, they have to put up a big performance. You feel a performance is in them. They just haven't uh, put it over a 70 minute game yet. You, you have to see, and even you mentioned the young lads, Kieran Archer and all them. I, I see the other 20 team. He isn't actually on the team, which is um, a bit of a strange one. I think he's 21, is, if I'm not mistaken, and he's not even on the panel. It's a strange one, even down to Carp late. Murphy doesn't seem to be getting on the team. Mark Cronin, I don't know, is this not putting young lads at the deep end, but considering it's the Leinster Championship, I would have thought Dublin would have pushed them players in, as you said. So, look... I think Kildare will put up a challenge to Dublin, but Dublin should win it in the end. They have to put up a performance. If they don't, you'd be seriously concerned for them going to the game against Bay or Galway. Huge opposition after that. Yeah, like, I mean, it is um, it is going to be interesting, definitely, without doubt. I suppose moving on from that, I suppose we'll touch briefly just on the on the minor game that happened in, in Tullamore. It was the delay 2020 All-Ireland minor, uh, All, All-Ireland minor football championship final. It was Derry 2-12, Kerry 1-14. I mean, incredible late drama in this game. I, I watched the first half, obviously, because it started at 1 o'clock and, and kind of turned it on just towards the end to, to see all the drama unfold. I suppose like it was crazy. Like Kerry were, were chasing the game. They got a late goal through Morris O'Connell. Then Derry go down the other end, win a penalty. And literally with the last, it wasn't the last kick of the game, but it was the last score of the game. I mean, what a way to, to win, you know, the, the county's first minor title since 2002. And I think their fifth, uh, like in, in terms of their, like their overall history. So, I mean, that's what an achievement in the end. Unbelievable achievement. And, um, there was a lot of spoils on car football fans' faces after that, seeing Kerry get a goal, think it they'd won it, and then they could see the penalty on the other end. Like it's it's absolutely brilliant from car point of view, but even for more so from a dairy point of view, it's absolutely brilliant. And I see the bit of the game against Monaghan in the Ulster final. Geez, they have some very good players, especially their centre forward, their captain, Matthew Downey, is an unbelievable player. He'll be definitely one for the future and um Rory Gallagher wants to build a team around him. I'm sure the future wrote Shea McGuigan, Connor Glass, and Matthew Downey definitely further down the line. So, look, the signs are very good for Derry, but Kerry, they had a decent year. I think Cork should have beat them in the Munster semi final last year. We threw the game away, but Kerry hammered Ross Common and cleared in. So, look, look, it was a brilliant win for Derry, and they utterly deserve it after their. Um, their uh, their success in the minor championship games going going over the past few games they put away me with ease they put away Monaghan it should have been with ease up until uh, Lachlan Burry red card but look Derry they'll enjoy they'll enjoy the weekends they'll they deserve us they've done absolutely brilliantly over the past few years and look it's a bad week for underage for Kerry considering they lost it twenty to Cork as well which was absolutely brilliant so um look. Uh, carry out a bit of a rush underage as well and a bit of a stat before we finish up as well out of the minor title since 2014 um, those minor players haven't gone on to win an under 20 all Ireland. like that questions whether carry whether the conveyor belt to carry is that good or not whether they're good enough to get up to that level or not get up to under 20 where it really matters because anything can happen in minor really so look it's a bad week underage, minor and under 20 for Kerry, but brilliant week for Derry and congratulations to all involved. Yeah, fair play to Derry. And that's that's definitely a, an interesting stat that you proposed about Kerry. All right, like they definitely do have, I mean, at the moment anyway, like they've plenty of young talent to, to keep them going for the next five to 10 years anyways. But yeah, maybe, I mean, to be fair, like a lot of the, the under 20 players are actually in their team. So, I mean that could also be a reason why like if David Clifford was was playing with the under 20s and he, he didn't go straight for minors maybe they would have won a an under 20 title so it's um it is an interesting one with Kerry all right but yeah fair play to Derry massive congratulations to them and I'm sure they'll be you know the the Derry train the Derry hype train keeps moving on with the fact that they have obviously had a very good year this year with the seniors and be interesting to see how the minors get on now for the for the 2021 championship and and, and, and all the other you know teams across all the other codes but yeah look listen we'll, we'll go ahead and wrap this up here anyways cheers Matthew for uh, for coming on I'll link down your, your podcast down below as always and um, yeah appreciate your time thanks very much Aaron happy to help